You ever meet that guy that swears up and down, it's just allergies, it's just allergies. Like, we know your MO, Bob, it's not allergies, go home. <laughs> In all seriousness though, allergies are not fun at all, right? I didn't start developing allergies until I was an adult, but I've noticed that when I am fasting, my allergies don't hit me as hard. And then I've learned that if I break my fast certain ways and I eat certain foods afterwards, I can actually continue some of the effects of like kind of that anti-allergy result that I'm getting during a fast. But in order to understand what's happening, we have to know why allergies affect us, but we also have to understand what fasting is doing to allergies. It's pretty wild. Hey, after this video, if you are someone that fasts, I recommend that you check out Thrive Market down below in the description. They're an online membership-based grocery store. Super awesome, super easy. So if you're doing fasting or keto or anything like that, you can sort by different diet type within their online store and then you get groceries delivered to your doorstep. Mainly just like pantry staples and some frozen stuff, but it is amazing and it's made my life so much easier and saved me a ton of cash because I'm not having to go to the grocery store all the time. They've been a supporter on this channel with all my fasting and keto videos for like three, four years. Huge, huge big thanks to them. And then also there is a link down below that'll save you 25% off of a membership as well as a free gift if you use that link down below. So check them out after this vid. So the journal Nutrition Metabolism has released some pretty interesting preliminary information that has really got me thinking, well, this could be why we feel so good with fasting and why fasting helps our allergies out. But let's look at what happens, okay? You have these things called mast cells. They are a component of our immune system. And when you, let's say, for example, cut your finger, mast cells are released and they go to the site of the injury, right? And when they get to the site of the injury, mast cells go through a very particular thing called degranulation. I want you to envision a mast cell or a cell that has like a bunch of like little granules, like almost little specks on it. And when these specks fleck off, it's called degranulation, it releases all kinds of different what are called mediators and inflammatory mediators to deal with the injury. It's like a care package of things to deal with. It's like the care package gets dropped off at the site and then it opens up and it has a toolkit of different things, some of which are things to form scars, some of which are things to uh, actually clog blood like platelets, okay, and trigger that. And then we also have things called histamines that release, okay, and these histamines can trigger all kinds of different reactions as well. Okay, well, did you know that mast cells are involved when it comes down to allergies too? Okay, here's what it looks like. Let's say you breathe in a big old dust of pollen. Okay, at first, this pollen is a foreign invader. Whether you like it or not, even though it's a natural substance, it is a foreign invader to your body and your body learns to deal with it. Okay, and it learns to deal with it by triggering a little bit of an immune response through what's called a B cell. The B cells then produce what is called an immunoglobulin E or IgE reaction. Now sometimes it's little, sometimes it's large, but the very first time that it encounters this foreign pollen, it says, uh oh, we better label this pollen because we're not sure about it. Okay, so then the IgE knows its MO, it knows the method of operation of that pollen and it's going to keep its, keep its guard up. So it binds to the mast cell. So now the mast cell has IgE on its membrane and this IgE has an affinity for this pollen. So every time your body sees the pollen, the mast cell is gonna respond and the IgE is going to receive that pollen signal and guess what's gonna happen? Degranulation of the mast cell with a hyper response of histamine to deal with it. Because there's not a cut, so it doesn't trigger more platelets. There's nothing to scar, it's just this foreign invader. So what does it do? Well, histamines say, fight, fight, fight. Immune system riles up, you start having congestion and inflammation in your nose, your joints hurt, all kinds of classic allergy symptoms. Okay, Thomas, shut the heck up. Where does fasting come in? Well, this is where it's intriguing. So fasting, Obviously, for longer periods of time, like over 15, 16 hours, you start to produce ketone bodies. Well, it turns out you don't even need that many ketones to sort of attenuate the response to allergies. What happens is ketones stabilize the degranulation of these mast cells. So remember the mast cells that break apart their little granules to release all the mediators? Well, ketones make it so that they don't overreact and degranulate too fast and too wildly. They degranulate the way that they're supposed to. So when we overreact to pollen, which is exactly what like an allergy is, it's stabilizing that so we don't degranulate as crazily and we don't have as much of a histamine response. The way that it does this is it decreases sort of a calcium concentration within the cell that's involved with overall just kind of 
this process in the beginning. So we don't have to go into like the mineral and biochem detail of the calcium efflux and influx, but we do know that by stabilizing and kind of like kind of maintaining and reducing that calcium concentration, we allow this to occur. So why is this making you feel better? Well, two reasons. One, okay, you obviously have the attenuation of that degranulation, but additionally, think about it like this. When you are fasting, you're not bringing in inflammatory foods. You're not bringing in anything inflammatory. You're in like the least inflammatory state you could possibly be because you're not bringing in anything that could send an inflammatory signal. But when you are not fasting, you have all these different foods that might possibly be pushing you up to the upper limit before you would start being symptomatic, but you're just not quite there, right? And then all it takes is breathing in an allergen or a pollen to push you over the edge. Okay, so let's say you ate somewhat anti-inflammatory when you were eating. Well, then maybe your bucket's only half full. So then you need a fair bit of pollen to actually push you into an allergic response, but not as little as you would need if you were eating super inflammatory. The point of me saying this is when you're fasting, your inflammation bucket is very empty because there's nothing coming in. So you need a lot more pollen to do the job. You pretty have much stuff to sit outside and just like infuse it to really get that reaction, right? So you're also just kind of attenuating once again how sensitive your body is to that allergen. But then what happens when you break your fast? Well, yeah, you're gonna have an inflammatory response just because you're eating. That's a natural response. So a lot of times what I found is, oh shoot, after I break my fast, my allergies come back and they come back pretty bad because then I'm putting everything right back to where it was before. But I've realized over the years that during peak allergy times, I just need to keep my diet very anti-inflammatory after I break my fast. Okay, so that means keeping it lean, clean protein like I always talk about. But, and you're gonna hate me for this, but this is really only gonna be for like the first two or three meals so you can kind of like slowly come out of a fast. When you come out of a fast, you naturally will get a big spike of inflammation, but if we can kind of modulate what foods we bring in, we can kind of make it so it's a little bit less intense. So I would recommend for the first two meals after you break your fast, keeping dairy out of the equation because it can be an inflammatory trigger. And even if you're not like allergic to it, it's still going to fill that inflammation bucket up a little bit, right? Additionally, any kind of grains, so that means rice, that means oats, that means gluten, that means bread, just keep it out of the equation. Okay, additionally, I would really recommend keeping nuts out of the equation. Yes, I know, it's like, what are you gonna eat? Now, I'm not saying this is gonna be forever. This is just like shortly after you break your fast, okay? Just remember that, okay? And then additionally, when you look at anything like nightshades, it may sound crazy, but nightshades, tomatoes, bell peppers, chili peppers, even some cayenne, uh, eggplant, anything in the nightshade category. And I know it sounds like, what the heck am I gonna eat? Well, maybe it's easier for me to explain what you could eat, and it's actually quite basic. Okay, realistically, you'd wanna be having some kind of lean protein, once again, leafy green vegetables. You want your fats to be coming from either good sources of like poly or monounsaturated fat sources. So I would recommend olive oil. I would recommend even pork because you can get some uh, polyunsaturated fat that's coming from the meat there versus saturated fat, which could trigger more lipopolysaccharides. Just hear me out on this. Okay, then you also have things like coconut oil, palm oil. If you wanna go for any kind of like uh, more of a peanut butter type thing, I would recommend going with like coconut butter because it's going to be less inflammatory than say almond butter or anything like that. Uh, the big thing you really do want to lean into is just like the asparagus, the artichokes, any of those prebiotic fibers, not right when you break your fast, but you know shortly thereafter. Now I'm not going to give you the full playbook here. My point is saying like if you were to go on Google and you were to search autoimmune paleo, AIP, Pretty much the foods that are approved in an AIP style diet would be good right after breaking your fast to mitigate the allergic response. And again, this is really only for the first two meals after you break a fast because then your body's going to have enough of sort of a, I guess it's reacted enough to food already that it's not going to be as sensitive to the other foods that you bring in. So it's made a big difference for me when you look at the research and understanding how that sort of that mast cell degranulation works, then it all adds up. And I understand now why I feel good when I fast and I understand now why certain foods make my allergies worse. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel and I'll see you tomorrow.